Yeah, so thank you all for joining. I think we can start the space. Uh, this is being recorded, by the way, and will later be uploaded to our YouTube channel, NIMS YouTube channel. You can re-watch or re-listen to it. So yeah, let's get started. And um, first, ask you guys to briefly introduce yourself and um, share a bit about your journey in the world of Web3. My name is Diane. I'm the social media manager for NIM, and I'm in charge of this account. So nice to have you guys here today, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Please go ahead with introductions. Uh, maybe Jury can go first, and then Crypto Cito and Candice. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm Yuri. I'm the co-founder of Cosmoverse and Trans Validator. We started Cosmoverse back in 2021 when the Lisbon Blockchain Week was going on. Uh, Crypto Cito gathered the team together with Brazil and Fabian, and we decided to host the very first Cosmoverse conference as part of the Lisbon Blockchain Week. This was like a very exciting time. Teams got together and uh, lots of innovation took place. For example, Quicksilver was uh, founded back at uh, Cosmoverse 2021. And yeah, then we decided to push Cosmoverse towards uh, Medellin, Colombia, which was also um, an incredible event. We decided to add another day. Even more people came. And yeah, now Istanbul is uh, the place to be in October. Cosmoverse is said to be hosted in Istanbul from October 2nd to October 4th. And um, shortly after Cosmoverse, we are going to host our very first hackathon in the name of Cosmoverse called Hackmos. So yeah, this is uh, what I am doing in Web3 and I'm letting Cito take it from, from here. Yeah, I think... Uh, the origin story is uh, very accurate, accurate and it's been a crazy journey over the past two years. And like you and I, we met during the time when COVID started. Um, so that's when I also started my YouTube channel. You know, everybody was at home. So I think starting a, a channel and creating content was what a lot of people tried out. And like I, I stumbled upon Cosmos sometime in late 2020. So... That was really the time when I got into this whole idea of IBC. This was actually before IBC even went live. So now it was like this idea and philosophy of like network sovereignty and basically horizontal scalability, IBC and those kind of things. I also found the Cosmos ecosystem to be extremely welcoming. And like you can really feel the vibes also at Cosmoverse um, every year. It's like an ecosystem of, of sovereign development teams, of builders. It's an ecosystem of people. And that's what I really enjoy about it. So, yeah, that's uh, really, you know, everything we got in Cosmos. And obviously, we do a lot more things in Cosmos and in crypto overall. But, um, yeah, with Cosmos coming up, I think this is what's been keeping us busy now for the past months, like, more and more. And obviously, right now, it's just crazy. Like, all the, you know, details we're finalizing on ground and everything. But, um, yeah, we're excited to welcome everybody here in, in Istanbul and less than two weeks so amazing thank you oh uh, yeah candace please go ahead hi i'm candace so i i work with nim project but actually before that i used to work for tendermint all in bits so that's actually how i actually first met yuri i remember because i was in lisbon in 2021 and i think it was the launch party for hack atom and it's for crypto Zero. i think uh i didn't think we met in person but we definitely spoke online you know on telegram like you know all of us like all of us do in the crypto world in the world of cosmos and yeah i mean that was lisbon in 2021 and last year was in medellin um very appreciative that you guys actually you know brought me all the way there because i loved colombia i loved medellin and i remember they coincided with the name team off site so i actually took free flights to get from Rhodes to Medellin and you know it was all in one day so that was uh, pretty brutal but um, really worth it so yeah I'm still quite active in the Cosmos ecosystem and I'm just really excited to bring everybody here today on to the name to the spaces. Wow that sounds like a big journey thank you for the introductions so Yuri right it's not Yuri I'm sorry I, I, I called you wrong earlier oh, and fine. so i can call you yeah so yuri and Cito, can i call you guys like that sure <laughs> thank you so much so yeah you mentioned that the cosmos ecosystem is super friendly i can totally relate to that as well i was at uh 
gateway to Cosmos in June and Prague and it was super friendly, a lot of very nice developers and it's like quite tight knit as well. Is that what motivated you to become a part of the Cosmos ecosystem? Like how exactly did you get to know about Cosmos and fall into it? Because I believe you guys are validators, right? Yeah, I will let Sito start here because he was the person who dragged me into Cosmos further down the road. So I think that makes more sense for you, Sito, to start here. Yeah, I, I Cosmos killed everyone. And like I said, I was in crypto for a couple of years before that and just gained experience in like various things. I even worked in a project as part of my internship back in 2018 and then you know, traveled around uh, mostly in Asia. And I figured like Asia is really the crypto hotspot. That was like the 2018, 19 bear market. That was really like, you know, I, I was based in Shanghai. So that's where I really got very, very deep into crypto. And even back then, like I always liked this idea of interoperability, but there wasn't really anything tangible, anything that was actually working, right? It was just a lot of ideas. So the big hook that got me till today in, in Cosmos was 2020, I, I just started my YouTube channel and then I made a tweet that's like, I have some Atom in my wallet. I don't know why, when I bought them and why I got them. And Jack Sempelin responded to that tweet and he's like, uh, yo, if you don't mind, I can just walk you through IBC and Cosmos and everything and the rest from there is history. He came to my channel. He really explained me everything. And I'm forever grateful that he did that because that really resonated with a lot. And like the first thing he told me was really that Cosmos white paper is basically finished with the launch of IBC. And I was like, this doesn't happen in crypto. Like this is something that never gets done, right? It's just all promises and ideas. And from there, I you know got deep down into Cosmos, interviewed a lot of people over the past years on my YouTube channel and obviously changed my format a little bit. But yeah, that's that's the the TLDR of how I got into it. And yeah, maybe Yuri, you can share your story. Yeah, so after Cedo was um, Cosmos pilled, I was the next victim, so to say. So Cedo told me about Cosmos when I was diving deeper into Polygon. Back then it was called Matic. And he told me, okay, if Polygon is the internet of the layer twos and cosmos is the internet of blockchains and this is how it essentially started he introduced me to jack to sunny and the others we had um, our first interviews with all of the cosmos people back then and then we started this very very adventurous show called this week in cosmos where we picked like one cosmos project per week to make a deep dive on our youtube channel which was called DeFi times back then this is how we entered Cosmos and because we made those uh, connections back then and because we were like diving deeper into Cosmos, we realized that there are a lot of conferences in uh, in Lisbon going on. Back then we were both based in Lisbon and then we realized, okay, there's no Cosmos conference. There's just a Solana conference, near conference, an Ethereum hacker house, Avalanche house and a big Ethereum conference. We need something for Cosmos as well. This is how Cosmoverse was born further down the road. And I also want to um, add here, I think what we've done in Cosmos, with Cosmoverse specifically, but also with the validators, this would not have been possible in any other crypto ecosystem. Because usually every crypto ecosystem is very top down. You know, you have one core organization that runs the show, that runs the marketing, runs the conferences. And Cosmos is really in a, such a fragmented ecosystem, which also has disadvantages like things move slower there's no clear direction sometimes like misalignment miscommunications drama but the bright side is that people like us like independent community members can like really step up and contribute and like our voices are heard right and like since the beginning i always kept telling like you know if you're if you're passionate about what you what you are then just make something out of it whether that's content creation organizing events or anything the like like there's so much you can do and I feel like Cosmos is really the only ecosystem in crypto where you can actually establish a brand that's like, mean, you know, becoming a meaningful piece in the in the puzzle. Um, if you look at most other crypto ecosystems, like if you're not part of the core foundation, core company, like you have no chance to contribute in a meaningful way that's also being heard. So I think this is really important to understand and like a big feature of Cosmos that's very, very underrated. 
I see. Yes, indeed. Uh, Candice, do you have anything to add on to this? Well, actually, you know, I've been in Web3 for about six years and a bit now, and most of my projects before were actually uh, Ethereum-based. So I do agree in a sense that while I was with those projects, it was kind of a bit more siloed. I think because the Ethereum ecosystem is definitely way bigger than the Cosmos ecosystem, right? So I think there was a bit of some sort of fragmentation. I don't think I, I didn't even go to ECC conferences. I don't, I don't really connect a lot of people on the ground, maybe because I'm not very technical. And, you know, back then the conferences were very technical. Whereas in, in Cosmos ecosystem, we are smaller, which may not necessarily be a bad thing. But to see those points, you can contribute in meaningful ways that maybe are a little bit out of your usual day job description. And I do like that because it allows me to learn quicker, learn a bit more connect with people who are doing different things. And as a whole, you know, um, a tight lifts on boats, right? So as long as we are able to contribute in different ways, bring something a little bit different to the table, each conference, each Twitter space even, or even each Twitter argument, I think it can only then allow the ecosystem to grow meaningfully and actually learn from mistakes and perhaps, you know, grow in one day to be a bit bigger than the Ethereum community, but in a good way where, you know, we're actually working together and changing the world and bringing Web3 to the real world and Web2 uh, companies. Yes, I love how you say in a good way. <laughs> agree with this. I have a quick question for Yuri because uh, you mentioned you were doing this week in Cosmos series before. So um, did you ever deep dive into NIM? Back then, NIM wasn't uh, wasn't public. It was like in well, when did we start this? It was in early twenty twenty one actually. So IBC was just invented. Okay, okay, yeah. Because my next question kind of brings me to the role of privacy in the current. Web3 landscape, and you can focus on Cosmos as well if you wish. As you know, NIM is a privacy-centric project, and we're all about that. So I really want to get your guys' opinions on the role of privacy in Web3 at the moment, and Cosmos specifically if you want to, but also in general, that's fine. So maybe uh, Zito first? Yeah, sure. I think privacy is a necessity. It's also like, I think, one of the core philosophical pillars of crypto in the first place. I think, you know, the whole cyberpunk movement, like back to the roots. I also met people like um, David Shaw, who has been an, the inventor of, uh, what was it, DigiCash, like before even Bitcoin was launched. I met Eric Forres, who is also like a big voice in crypto. And like, he's also a lot about privacy and how this is an important uh, pillar. So I think the big question here is moving forward, how will this merge into our economy? Because I think right now there are some some solutions. I think over the years, a lot of privacy solutions also actually turn out not to be private. So I think there's also a technological barrier there that needs to be overcome. What I really love to see in customers is that there's a lot of innovation. You know, what you guys are doing, there's also a bunch of other projects that are very promising, that have very solid teams and development see this from a different angle. So that's really what I love. Like is that in Cosmos, you don't just have one idea, but you have many ideas, different teams working on them, and then also competing in a many times friendly way, but also many times in a very, very competitive way. But I think overall, like it's a very important thing. It's a very important topic. And yeah, I think there will always be demand for it, right? And like whatever has demand, like there needs to be products around it. What I also think is like uh, the biggest challenge maybe for any privacy related protocols and, and ecosystems is really UX. So I think that's something like whoever really comes up with a very, very, and I'm also curious. I mean, you know, I've been following Nim and Candice with a call. I remember like, I think around a year ago or something. And I think I'm also curious to hear like, you know, what your thoughts are, like what are the biggest bottlenecks and challenges from your perspective working on a privacy uh, focused project? Because from my outsider perspective, it seems like really UX and also maybe to some degree also making people aware that like privacy is a necessity and not just a feature that you only need when you're in trouble, right? Like it's actually something that people should care about, but also a lot of people don't actually care enough about. So I don't know how you, uh, what your views are and how you tackle this, but I think it would be interesting to hear from your insiders like, like you guys. 
I think you're really on point there. So I, I know when social media started, like I was, I was an adult. That's how I am. <laughs> and uh, I was, back then I was still a bit concerned about how, I think I remember I was on, was I, I was on, I think I was on Facebook and I saw how the features started evolving. And then when I found out I could actually change people to put people on different lists and then limit what they could see for my profile. I spent a lot of time doing that. And, you know, to your point, um, making people aware, because I think in this day and age, a lot of us are aware, but a lot of us are just resigned, um, especially for those who grew up in the big data, the Google era, where, you know, tracking and ad tech was already, you know, really exploded in our lives. And we make jokes about, oh, you know, Siri is listening or Apple's listening and Google's listening, but then we don't really do anything about it because we don't know what to do about it. You know, to your point, the solutions out there aren't UX friendly as well. So I think two points there in terms of the awareness, we care about privacy, but we don't know how to care about it because a lot of the solutions out there are just, you know, half-baked to the point where, yeah, you go, okay, you know, if we're believing that WhatsApp is totally private, then, you know, we're nowhere in trouble, right? And they actually you know, spend so much money, put out huge ad um, in London to, to make us believe that. Then you come to the point where the UX bit, um, a lot of the solutions out there, even our NIM extent, our NIM Connect, right? It is actually quite similar for a lot of the other Web3 solutions out there. We have issues, not just with the UX, but also things like latency, and because it is a very new industry. A lot of things are trial and error and, you know, I have full respect for the blockchain engineers and those who came in right at the beginning, because there's a lot of work there to be done. You know, I used to joke that, I used to joke that, you know, developers just go to Reddit forums or, you know, tech people, IT support people just go onto forums and find solutions. And I know that the blockchain engineers and the developers, they don't have that luxury. And um, it's been really interesting to grow with these people because every time there's a shift in the roadmap, People get frustrated. I've been in this space for so long. I understand why. I'm just sitting there waiting and I'm, I'm sorry I can't contribute. But yeah, I think the principles of blockchain when we started was uh, for the good of the world. But I think in the past couple of years, all the the regulatory issues and you know the crypto so-called frauds, because I say so-called frauds, because these are actually traditional frauds. You know, it's not crypto fraud itself. Has kind of overshadow what blockchain or web three was meant to be. And in that sense, you know, even if we say that we are a really, really successful, a good privacy solution and we're running on a blockchain and you know decentralization is actually a huge part of why it's a good solution. I think the people in in the web two they will still be quite reticent about adopting it. And so I think we're going back to educating people about privacy but also educating people about decentralization. I mean, that's my take on it. So I'm curious to know what everyone else thinks as well. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. And I think uh, educating people and having people be aware of the real issues around privacy and how it's so important is uh, very meaningful. Uh, yes, yes, Yuri, please add on. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight what also Kenda said. We all kind of grew up in the era of um, the big data giants so for example personally i grew up with facebook with instagram and if you weren't on facebook during the high school times um, you weren't like part of the cool kids so you completely ignored the fact of giving away your data and whenever you access um, a website nowadays you are getting cookies offered and until i entered web3 i did not understand what cookies actually are if that makes make sense so um yeah i think it's like um it's uh, it will be like very very challenging from an educational point of view to convince people to do things differently now compared to what they were used to do since like 10 15 or even 20 years mm -hmm. totally it's a lot of food thought for thought uh when it comes to this right i appreciate we're having this conversation as well I'll move on uh, to talk a bit more about Cosmoverse. So um, for this year's Cosmoverse, which is in uh, Istanbul, right? And you guys are already there. What are some of the key topics that will be discussed there? And what can attendees expect in terms of discussions? Could you tell us a bit more about the, the event? Yeah, I can maybe go first. I think this year, the big theme for us 
really is for customers to branch out from the Cosmos ecosystem. We, of course, have all the core organizations. We have a lot of support from the ICF. Teams like Neutron, they're coming with like 30 people. You guys are coming. Like A lot of people are coming that are inside the Cosmos ecosystem. But I think what we've been working very hard on is to also bring non-Cosmos native projects, as in like other Web3 ecosystems like Polkadot that we just announced. We have a, a keynote speaker from the Ethereum Foundation. We have speakers from, what do we have? Solana, I think we have one. Um, so yeah, just different ecosystems outside of Cosmos and then also non-crypto. So this is also really the first time that we did a lot of BD and uh, networking for TreadFi, you know, uh, Vodafone, Deutsche Telekom. Um, we have one very, very big speaker announcement that we do either today or tomorrow, just finalizing the speaker profile. But that's a huge speaker that we're very, very excited about having at Cosmoverse. And then also shows where Cosmos stands. These people, they come to an event. They don't want to associate them with something that they find boring or like maybe in some cases they just get paid to like talk at an event. But we just received a lot of applications from like very quality projects, companies that want to come, that want to speak, that want to meet everyone in Cosmos. Uh, whether that's VCs, even academic institutions, we have a lot of university partners. We actually have an entire academic track where we do like also weekly webinars with uh, university students. So I think this, this year we just focused a lot more on like groundwork and preparing everything. And also maybe just for people to also understand, like we've been working on this now for 10 months, but people just seem like, oh, it's a three-day conference. But actually like the whole work behind getting to this point where you have 14, 1500 people show up to such an event requires a lot of detailed, refined preparations and networking, leveling yourself up, especially in a place where none of us is based, right? Like we're, none of us is based in Istanbul. So we had to do this basically from an outsider perspective. But yeah, the, the place is really amazing. I don't know if you've ever been here. Besides, of course, like the, the culture, the, the food and, and everything and the, the people are very friendly. A lot of bars. There's like overall the, the vibes in the city are really cool. But also when it comes to crypto, there's a lot of demand because they got wrecked with the Turkish Lira, hyperinflated. They lost a lot of trust in, in the government over the years, which is also a very sensitive topic here. So Crypto is, is a solution for many people, right? And I also know a lot of people care about privacy here. They care about many things and many values that we share in the crypto space. So that's why we believe it's a perfect fit. And the market tells us also that this is the right choice because we have a lot of demand. And yeah, there we are. Super. Yeah, can you, can you tell us a bit about what NIM is doing at Cosmoverse? Well, uh, just before I get into that, I wanted to ask Sido and Yuri. So, obviously, it, we've we've had a lot of conferences this year. So, I think so far, I think the biggest Cosmos conference was Nebula here in Paris in July. And you know, we had the the panel. You know, other next twelve months make a break for Cosmos. And interestingly, uh, we have Mainnet this week it starts today, and Yelena is on stage. I think we. With someone from Atom Accelerator DAO and someone from DYDX to talk about what was safe the internet of blockchains. Are we going to deep dive into that in Cosmoverse? Are we going to really take a look at what's happening for real and try to get ourselves out of this funk? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, good that you mentioned that. And like, we're very friendly, you know, with all the other Cosmos conference organizers. Actually, also conferences like Gateway and Nebular that you mentioned, they were also like initially inspired from what we did at Cosmos One, and then we also helped them a little bit initially to put their their events together. But I think what maybe separates Cosmos a little bit is like we target a different audience, like a, a more broader audience. And I think it's great to have different formats and different types of conferences, where some are focused more on the developer community inside of Cosmos. I think that's super important. But yeah, for us, it's really to to branch out. So to answer your question, yes, uh, and Yuri can talk about just like our media strategy and everything, because we invest a lot of time and you know resources into having strong media presence. So we are actually coordinating a lot of stuff and announcements that will be made at customers, right? Like a lot of things we are not, we don't know like what they want to announce, just like people want to announce stuff, but they don't tell us in advance most of the times. 
I think the atom tokenomics panel is something that's not necessarily like a, a huge announcement, especially for like Cosmos people. But I think it's very important to have this discussion at the largest conference in the ecosystem in front of a live audience, but also in front of the community watching online around the world. Last year, we had 50,000 people watching through the live stream. I think this year is not going to be any different, maybe even more than that. We're coordinating this actively with yeah, a lot of the speakers, you know, Circle, you mentioned Yelena, like Noble, Circle, they actually have a hacker lounge. They told me they want to coordinate something, some sort of announcement. Yeah, so there's a lot cooking, but we're also not really aware of the exact details, like what's what's going to be announced. But maybe Yuri can talk a little bit more about the, the media strategy. Yeah, so what is very important for us every year is that we invite all of the big media from crypto, but also outside. So last year we had the who is who of the Web3 media on the ground. We had Cointelegraph at Cosmoverse, be in crypto, but also big fintech media outlets such as Benzinga. We even had CNN on the ground covering Cosmos stories. And I think this is like very important because I think like Cosmos needs to be a little bit more omnipresent than the broader crypto industry but also outside of it. So for example, Avalanche does a good job there with Avalanche Summit. They also invite a lot of the big media and they do a lot of BD with yeah, well-known Web2 enterprises, um, the ones that uh, Michael mentioned earlier, Vodafone, Telecom, et cetera. And we want to make sure that Cosmos gets the attention that it deserves. Also to onboard new, new users, but also to onboard more developers. Because if you are around at um, Ethereum hackathons or Ethereum conferences. A lot of people say, yeah, I know Cosmos. It sounds cool, but I haven't dived deeper into it or I don't know too much about it. So I think like as well as for user onboarding as also for developer onboarding, we need to bring more eyeballs uh, to the Cosmos ecosystem. And this is why we bring all of the media to Cosmoverse. And in addition to that, as Michael already mentioned, all of the big announcements will be made at Cosmoverse. This was last year the case already, even in 2021, when Figment announced the graph integration to Cosmos. So yeah, for all of the big announcements, Cosmoverse is the place to be. And this is also why we invite all of the big media so that the broader crypto industry knows that Cosmos is cooking, so to say. So you're saying we should be Istanbulish about Cosmos come... 10 days time. Very funny. There's, there's actually an event, a side event, two days before Cosmoverse, that's called Istanbulish. So yes. guys of us are organizing that. Crypto female, right? In uh, Istanbul. Yeah, I know yeah, that. Tima, Tima and the crypto female team, they're definitely good, good friends of us for some years now. So, uh, they're officially launching basically the Cosmoverse week with their Istanbulish event, which is really cool. That's nice. Yes, I'm guessing there will be a lot of side events as well. And talking about Istanbul, I heard that there are a lot of cats there. So for cat lovers, apparently it's a nice city. And uh, Seto, you mentioned there will be a huge speaker. Is is this a secret still? Yeah, it's still a secret. Uh, we will actually announce it, I think, today. We're, we still have to finalize the, the speaker profile. But I can tell it's one of the largest VC funds in the world. It's big, very big. Well, we all heard it here first. Indeed. <laughs> okay, since uh, we're coming up to the end soon, I'll ask a question about a different topic. So um, I heard from Candice that you guys are both validators. Could you tell us a bit more about how um, you handle responsibility of being a validator, especially in terms of privacy and security, or just share with us some of the best practices you use as a um, validators? And maybe uh, anyone wants to go first, Yuri? Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of security, we are very straightforward. We are checking all the boxes with having backup, like backup servers all across the globe. We are also not dependent on one server only. So in case one server fails, we are not running into any problems. Also, if like one country, I mean, we have seen this in 2021 with China, if one country decides to ban crypto and every infrastructure that is related to the industry, then we also don't run into problems because yeah, we are covered like worldwide in the US, in, in Europe, in data centers in Asia and so on and so forth. So this is like the uh, the aspect that we follow via the uh, security. 
And in regards to privacy, I mean, like as a validator, there's not much that you can do since we are not collecting any privacy data or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can look who is like, which addresses are delegating to us via MintScan. I think that's like open to everyone. But um, yeah, there's like, except that there's not not much we can um, we do since, yeah, everything is open. Mm -hmm. But yeah, curious, very curious what does he tries to say here. Yeah, I mean, we also have a similar structure, like different backup servers in different uh, geographical region regions and like from different providers. Uh, I think when it comes to being a validator, like it, it actually is a big responsibility, not just from like ensuring uptime, but also active participation. And, and I think governance is like oftentimes a really like underrated feature or like side responsibility for being a validator. That's like uh, actually a, a full-time job. We have three people dedicated on the team just for governance alone, but also we're now on over 30 chains. So it's like a, a huge task. I think there's a lot of learnings all, all, all the time that we have. I mean, a couple of months ago, we had an incident where we got slashed. That was very tough pill to swallow. We reimbursed everyone. And that was on the AFMAS network where they had quite unfavorable slashing parameters for us to, to say it like that. So that was a tough pill to swallow, but we take this very seriously. That's why we reimbursed everyone. That uh, was definitely a, a huge, huge learning and expensive lesson for us. But yeah, I think moving forward, like there's always uh, improvements we can do. Um, obviously, I think in both our cases, like we have teams, uh, we have technical teams dedicated to those kind of things. Because I, me myself, I'm, I'm less of a technical person. I'm more on the communication side, on the strategic side, onboarding uh, chains and those kind of things. Because you also have to be always up to date and like, you know, see where the market is moving because the market is very fast moving. So that's another angle to consider this from. But yeah, I think people sometimes take things for granted, like governance, for example. But if you're a validator, if you're delegated to a validator that is super active on governance, like you should be extremely grateful because this is a huge responsibility and a great burden for, for many, like in terms of, you know, allocating resources, human labor, and just also like discussing proposals. Like that's really, when we have team calls every week, like we talk a lot about pros and cons of proposals. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Like it's a lot of uh, work behind the scenes, same for conference organizing. It's like so much behind the scenes that it's not visible if you just go and attend a conference or you delegate to a validator, right? Like it's a uh, very similar in that, in that aspect, but yeah. Yeah, we've been doing this now for two and a half years. So yeah, and I think our track record and reputation that we've been building over the past two and a half years speaks for itself. That's great to hear. Candice, do you have anything you want to add? No, just to just to jump in here, talk a little bit about NIMS work with validator. So this is specifically for the Ethereum validator community only because uh, when you know they did the merge last year, moved to uh, POS, you know, we identified a whole slew of possible privacy related issues specifically where you know actually people who are watching or sophisticated bad actors could actually monitor and track validated transactions um, and so find out a lot of information you know like the IP addresses so it's almost equivalent to you know validators just putting up their bank statements on their doors and just inviting everyone to take a look at it so we did work with uh, chain safe to create uh, to develop a little PLP module that would help what we call you know shielded transactions. So this was a, f a first, you know, something new that we were doing. And obviously, you know, we what we will actually look at. I'm not saying it's on a roadmap. I'm not saying that the dev team is going to look at it. I'm just saying that if it's we did that for Ethereum, so there's no reason why we wouldn't um, look at doing something like that similar for the customers validators as well. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's not just about, to Yuri's point, you know, they don't collect data about whoever's delegating to them, staking with them, but you guys also need to look at your own privacy in terms of your own transactions and your own work. So, because I think in this day and age, you can never tell what might happen in terms of targeted attacks. So, yeah. Yes. Thanks a lot for sharing, Candice. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up here. Asito or Yuri, do you have any final comments you would like to, to say? 
No, just want to say uh, thank you for hosting this. Also, uh, thank you guys for your support this year. We are very excited to welcome you to Istanbul and are also looking very much forward to what you have to say on stage. Yeah, same here. Thanks for, for hosting this. I think it's uh, really cool to also be on the other side of the mic sometimes and be a guest and not always a host. So much appreciate the invite. And also, like Yuri said, looking forward to meet you if you need any Alpha Leagues for Istanbul itself, where to get around, where to find the best shisha and the best restaurants, like just let us know. And yeah, I look forward to meet you in in Istanbul. I want to see the famous cat statue. I think it's a famous Istanbul cat who passed away and there's like a huge statue commemorating the cat. So if anybody wants to go on a day trip up to go look at a cat, please DM me. <laughs> okay, Candice, please do send me a picture of the cat. Once you have it, maybe I'll post it on our Twitter. <laughs> I absolutely would. I'll put an insticle on the cat. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for organize it, helping to organize this as well. Sito, Yuri, was super nice to have you and we'll see you very soon in Istanbul. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. See you in Istanbul. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, see you. See you. Bye. Bye.